In this problem, we're going to be trying to derive the model equations for a suspended cable between two points. In order to do that, to set up our differential equation, let's start by considering two points. Points I'm going to call P1 and P2, and let those be arbitrary points on this cable. So I'm going to call this first one P1 and this second one P2. And then we're going to look at the tensions at P1 and P2 and denote them as T1 and T2. And in fact, I'm going to put a little bar over the top of them so you can tell when I write them that those are vectors. And then we're going to let W be the weight of the, ve of the piece of cable between point P1 and P2. Now let me zoom in a little bit and draw these vectors on there and let's identify their components. So the tension vector at P1 is going to be tangent to the curve at P1 because the, tan the, the tension is moving in the line of the cable. And so that vector right there is T1. And then the same will be true for the vector over here. It's going to move tangent to this line. And we're going to call that T2. And then the weight of a segment of cable is going to actually be applied at the center of mass for that line segment and it's going to be since gravity works straight down it's going to be moving downward which we'll call that the weight vector now what we can do is we can write each one of these in their component form um, now T1 is simple and so is W T1 would be negative T1 I where this T1 right here in fact let me label this in green this one right here is the tension magnitude at uh, T1, sorry, at P1. Meaning that I'm using the unbarred form of T1 to represent the actual tension in that cable. And this is I, right? This is a unit vector in the x direction and it's negative because it's acting in the negative x direction so I can write it in that component form. Um, similarly this W right here is going to be uh, acting in the negative y direction and it's going to be whatever the weight is and I'm going to use W um, to represent the weight of that section of cable and it's acting in the y direction and it's negative because it's going down and then last of all what about uh, T2? Now T2 will actually have two components. It has the x component and the y component. So if I call this length right here x and this length y we need to know what this angle theta is right here in order to identify those magnitudes. Now it turns out simply by using some trigonometry and remembering that the length of this side right here is going to be T2 just like the length of this vector right here was T1 we're using that same scalar form of T2 to represent the tension at P2 um, so that becomes T2 cosine of theta times the vector I plus T2 sine of theta times the vector j. And you can see that simply from looking at um, up here if you did uh, cosine of theta you get x over t2 so just move that to the other side and you get to x is t2 cosine of theta. That's where this piece right here comes from. Similarly you can do the same thing for um, the sine of theta or the y component. So the next thing that we now know is that because this system is in equilibrium, it's static, it's not moving, that the sum of these vectors has to equal the zero vector, which means the sum of the x components and the sum of the y components have to equal zero. So add up the x components. Now the x components I'm going to highlight here in yellow for you. This is times an i and this is times an i, but the, that's the only thing that's times an i. So you end up with the equation um, t2 cosine of theta minus t1 equals 0 and also here I'll highlight it in blue the y components add up to equal 0 by the way before I do that let me go ahead and write this out that means t1 has to equal t2 cosine 
of theta. Now, over here, since w in negative plus t2 sine of theta, that tells us that t2 sine of theta minus the weight of that section has to equal zero, or t2 sine of theta is w. Okay, now I'm going to do something a little bit kind of out of the blue here. What I want to do is I want to take and divide these two. I want to take and find out what is W divided by T1, the tension at that first cable. Well, because we know what these two are from here, that gives me T2 cosine, no, actually the other way around, T2 sine of theta divided by T2 cosine of theta, and the T2s cancel out, so we end up with sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, which is the same thing, using your trig identities as tangent of theta, or actually trig definitions. Now the tangent of theta is the ratio of y to x, right? At that point, this right here is the slope of the tangent at P2. So if we let P2 be a point on our curve um, for some given value of x, then this right here would represent dy dx. So what that tells us then, and I'm just going to scroll down to write this down, that says dy dx is equal to the weight of that section of cable divided by the tension at the origin, the tension at the origin, that is at the lowest point of the cable. Now that doesn't seem to tell us a whole lot, but you'll see in just an example that if we know some information about our cables, that is enough for us to solve the model of a particular suspended cable. In fact, let's take a look at the case where the suspended cable is supporting a, um, a bridge, a uniformly distributed weight across um, at each point on the cable. So now we assume that the cable supports a bridge of uniformly distributed weight. That is, for every foot, it weighs rho pounds, right? So if you go x feet, it's rho x is the weight of that um, bridge. And we're going to assume that because the bridge weighs so much, the weight of the cable is negligible. And so we don't actually care about the weight of the cable itself, just the weight that it's supporting, what weight is pulling down on it. And that's just going to be that section of bridge. We're also going to say that this length right here is length L, okay, and that the lowest point is at the midpoint. All right, so we're going to put our coordinate system so that the lowest point is right there at the middle. And I'm going to actually identify one more place for us. Let's say that the height of this thing is h. That is, the highest point is at a height h on my y-axis. Now let's take any point on the x-axis and let's label that point x, okay? Now, if we go from the lowest point to this point right here, how much does this section of the weight weigh? That is, how much is being pulled on? What's the downward force? Well, because we know that the bridge is uniformly distributed, the weight of this section of piece right here is equal to rho x. So going back to our differential equation, dy dx would be equal to Remember, it's weight over the tension at that center point. We know that's rho x on top over some unknown quantity, which is fixed but unknown at this point, the tension at the origin. or at the, and I keep saying origin. Origin's down here. The tension at the lowest point on the uh, cable. All right? We also know one other thing that the y at zero, let's call this uh, let's call this height right here, let's say that's known. Those are two things that we can physically measure um, without having to pull out some kind of spring or tension meter. We can actually measure just heights very easily. So let's say y at zero, at x equals zero, has a height of a. So really what we have now is an initial value problem looks like this. y prime equals, getting some straight marks in here, y prime equals rho x divided by t1, and y at 0 is a. Now, if you notice, that's a very simple equation to solve. Since t1 is a fixed 
constant and so is rho. This is separable. In fact, it's already separated for us. All we got to do is integrate both sides to solve that. So let's do that. I'm going to scroll down. Let's solve this differential equation right here, right? So dy would be equal to rho x over t1 dx. Just by moving the dx over to the right-hand side, I integrate both sides. Left-hand side with respect to y is dy. Right-hand side is equal to rho x squared over 2t1 plus a constant. Now we actually have enough information to figure out the c and the t1. The first thing that we know is that y at 0 is a, which if I plug in a for y and 0 for x, I get c is equal to a. So clearly that means y is equal to rho x squared over t1 plus a. But what is t1? How can we figure that out? Well, the other point that we know is this point right here. We actually know the x value. If the whole length is l, then at l over 2, and this would be negative l over 2 over here, by the way, at l over 2, y is equal to h. Right? So if we know what h is, we don't even have to find t1 by doing any kind of measurement on the system. All we've got to do now is plug in L over 2 into the equation we just got and set that equal to h. Okay, Since y at L over 2 is equal to h, we can say h equals rho of L over 2 squared divided by t1 plus a. Okay, and then solve that for t1, and then plug that t1 in here. And I'm going to skip all the algebra. It's actually pretty easy to do. Uh, but again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for t1 and then substitute back into this equation right here. So dot, dot, dot. Some math occurs here. <laughs> And you end up with y turns out to be 4h over l squared x squared plus a. And in case you didn't notice it, it's a parabola. So the shape that you see on a suspension bridge is in fact a parabolic shape. Now when there's not a uniformly distributed weight down here, the shape of this cable will change. If the only thing that the cable is supporting is itself, it also changes and turns out, like I said, not to be parabolic. I Like I said, in class, that is. All right, so there you go. There's the notes for that particular section. You can fill that in and see how that, uh, that works. This would be a good exercise for you just to try and make sure you can show that, um, but it's only algebra involved. Find T1 and then plug T1 back into here, simplify. You should end up with that. All right, there you go.